Hi everyone. Happy Memorial Day. <laughs> yeah. We got something new into this uh, week. It's Monday. New tool day. Oh yeah. And I've got something a little different again. Uh, Vivor contacted me a few weeks ago and said we're going to send you a bench grinder. I was like, okay, we'll take a look at a bench grinder. Bring it on. And it was a bench grinder slash polisher. And again, I was thinking, well, you know, this ought to be an interesting combo, but it actually has more features than what I realized they were talking about. But uh, I've got to give you a warning. Put your coffee down, or if you're eating pizza in front of the laptop, or whatever you're doing, put both your hands, you know, on each side of the computer or something screen, just so you don't cough and spill coffee out, because the bench grinder showed up, and, uh, yeah, <sighs> yeah. Here it is. <laughs> so when we opened the box and saw the uh, virtual size of this little guy, and it's a bench buffer polisher. So you've got a really nice fine grinding wheel right here. Probably good for doing drill bits and stuff even. But you also have this soft buffing pad right here. And there's another buffing pad that comes with the kit. And also, there's this great big uh, box full of, you know, accessories for little stuff like Dremel tool type stuff. Was like, what the heck does that do? But you also have this cable, and this cable here connects to the side of the machine, so you have a nice little buffer polisher uh, on a cable, so you can, you know, go at it with the with the wand here. Also, uh, tools, and of course, and some hardware for the rest here because this is going to be like any bench grinder you're going to have a couple of rests right here so let's put it together and uh we're going to do some polishing mm. okay so i've got it all together and i've got the two rests in place here also have they come with these little uh plexiglass windows you should still wear uh goggles anyways uh if you're going to use a grinder of any sort this is a fairly low speed because it is a buffer and a polisher so it's going to have 3600 rpm and uh, 1 14th of a horsepower. So it's not real strong, and it's, it's, this buffing speed is well within the range of buffing. In other words, you don't want too high a speed because you can actually burn through something when you're buffing. In this case, uh, I've attached the, uh, the wand to the side of the machine. It goes in the side here, you pull a little rubber plug out, and it screws on to the shaft here so that it will drive whatever's in the shaft. Also, there's a, just a one size collet but apparently the collet will fit all the accessories that uh, come with this. There's buffing pads, little wheel. There's also this little guy right here, it's kind of cute. Little square piece of uh, grinding stone that again, I guess you can uh, by hand or something, uh, clean something up with. And then you have the little sanding disc, little cutting discs, uh, lots of sandpaper discs or whatever with it. Wow, you know, there's quite a few. And then you have a, all these accessories. I just sort of dumped them out on the on the bench here so you could have a look at them and you got the little wrenches to tighten everything everything up with and there's also this little buffing wheel this buffing wheel here is a harder grit than what's in here this is more of a nice you know uh, polishing one right here this is more a uh, little bit more abrasive kind of thing so you've got a really interesting buffing polishing you know little machine here that can be attached to a workbench and that way this is gonna be you know this could be your buffing and polishing station I'm just going to hit something really nasty here and see how it works. And we'll start up the machine from the <laughs> from the back side here. Okay, there she goes. Really quiet, really smooth. And we'll just sort of, you know, hit this uh, with a, <clears throat> just hitting it with a very light uh, pressure. But you can already see it's, it's starting to clean the rust off for me. This, is, this has been a, just an old rusty uh, one I've had. A, I've had this laying around for years, and I just kind of keep it more for a decorative item for my workshop. Obviously, I don't you know use it, but you can get into something like this with something like this, where you can actually turn sideways a little bit and you know get down in there and really you know sort of you know buff it up kind of thing. It's starting to shine, so that's pretty cool. Got enough power. I, I'm, I'm going to lean into it a little bit. Yeah, and it's still going. It's, yeah, you're not even. Yeah, wow. That's taking a lot of hand pressure, and it's still running. Pre Shut that off. And it's still running really good. It's it's keeping up with me, and it's already started to polish that out really nicely. Just a, a quick demo. Uh, the wife's got some brass around. Maybe uh, go see if we can find a piece of brass to uh, deal with, and then we'll get this out of here. 
Mm. Okay, we're back. Uh, quick word about buffing. Uh, the problem here is these things are sometimes just like a paint over top of a, just a cheap piece of pot metal or something. So you're best to like, if you want to even try buffing, do underneath or something where it's hidden. Otherwise, you could destroy the whole piece. In this case, it's just a, you know, it's a small, it looks like brass, but I'm already looking at it and thinking, no, this is not even brass. This is uh, just a, probably some paint over a metal thing or something. But uh, we'll disconnect this. Would be a really good idea. And that doesn't work. And there you go. All right. So we'll take this off. Can probably uh, yeah. there we go. Just turn the wheel by hand. There we go. So we can get this off of here. So I'm just going to hit the buffing pad on the bottom and just see what sort of. Uh, well, let's see what kind of finish we get. Looks like there was something here at one time, but mm, I've got diamond grit polishers and all kinds of things around, but. Uh, yeah, the problem here is I'm pretty sure this is uh, just paint over a piece of metal or something, uh, finish, or even just a, I was thinking it might be plated, but to be honest with you, I don't think it's even plated. Oof, I uh, pushed a little too hard. Yeah, man. Well, when you're polishing, you really shouldn't be shoving the piece in too hard anyways, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, it's coming up slowly, but it's not really polishing. And the reason is this is not real brass or anything. So let's go find something else to mess with. We'll just put this, we'll sneak this back in there and put it back up on the, uh, <clears throat> where she had it. So let's uh, let's do this ring a little bit and just see what it even is. Cause I, I don't think it's a good ring. I think it's a junk ring, but we'll just kind of, you know, buff it off, put it on the buffing pad here a little bit and just see what we got. Hmm, yeah, it's, uh, actually, it's coming up looking pretty interesting. Let's try some more. I didn't think this ring was any good, so... Yeah. Oh, wait. Okay. That's, uh... I don't know if you can see that real well, but... Yeah, it's, uh... It's buffing it up. It's bringing up the finish. And taking all the old scratches and stuff. This ring's just been laying around the... Like a fairly heirloom thing or something. It's just laying around forever, but... I don't even know where it even came from, but... Yeah. Wow, that's actually coming up really nice. I buffed, uh, I buffed a penny. I'm not sure what kind of a, uh, how you, if you can, yeah, I think you can pretty much see that. I, I just threw it on the buffer for a minute here and <laughs> it looks good. I don't think buffing pennies is a good hobby, but I guess you could do it. Well, why not? Uh, here's another item that uh, <clears throat> we could try buffing a little bit and just see how it works out. Uh, you know, kind of a big, big job here, but oh yeah, look at that. Wow. Probably a waste a bit of a waste of time, but uh, just for fun. I guess I'll show you guys what this crazy thing is But this is back in like the 40s the 50s uh, You'd go to a party or something and somebody would open this up and offer you a cigarette. This was Yeah, it was a cigarette case for the uh, coffee table type thing kind of cool <laughs> Wanted to show you something else here uh, when it comes to changing this uh, here This is the uh, tool and you're going to just sort of spin this around so you can lock it in then you can take a wrench and just you know, unscrew this, call it, loosen it off, and remove the tool. It also comes with a larger sized call it for obviously larger shafted items, which let's see if this will even fit. In. Yeah, it fits in there. So I'm not sure why they did that, but uh, there's a there's a two call it's here, and this one here is looks like it's for bigger stuff. Oh, let's try that again. Okay, no, okay, it's for the smaller stuff. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, no, too big, too big. Let's see if we can find something. There's a small one there. Yeah, okay, and that's the call it for the small stuff that uh, comes with the kit. Wow, pretty cool. Let's, uh, yeah, let's uh, say this is uh, an interesting little tool for a lot of crazy stuff. Well, just when you thought it can't get any worse, <clears throat> we haven't touched this uh, little grinding stone they got on this side. Heck, let's, uh, let's, re let's destroy this chisel and see what it does. Yeah. Really fine stone, so kind 
That'll do a nice little job. Not getting too hot either. Wow, we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You'll like it. <laughs> Hit it more. That looks pretty decent. Huh, I'm impressed. Okay. Yeah, I just thought I'd try that because uh, I've got this junk gold uh, chisel that's been around forever. And uh, so you can't really hurt it, but yeah, that chisel looks like a, looks pretty nice now. <laughs> Not bad. Not that bad for a chisel. For an old chisel, it's a piece of junk, but yeah. Just for fun, I thought we'd take this to the next level. We've got the Beaver Power Pack here that we showed a few weeks ago. And we've got this little guy plugged in so that if you want to, say, be portable or you want to operate a, a buffing system at a uh, flea market or something like that, or you want to be remote with your RV, but you want to have a grinder and a buffer available to you, something like that. With this power pack, uh, we're switched on, I think. We'll start the buffer up, the machine, and we'll just see what kind of time we have on this thing. Uh, I'm seeing 12 hours right now on the, uh, on the Beaver. Yeah, so you could run this thing apparently up to about, looks like about 12 hours. How many watts? She's only drawing about 20 watts, so she's not not sucking a lot of power, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty neat. <laughs> we, we, could, we could run this uh, just anywhere with our portable power pack. I'll provide a link in the description below where you're going to find this and its accessories anyways, what you saw today. But I'll also provide a link in the below where you can find this power pack. It's uh, 300 watts. It's, it's really good too, from again, from who else? <laughs> Beaver, you know. <laughs> but I thought this this crazy idea just came to me, and I just thought I'll, I'll show you guys what, what, what you what you can do. Look at that! It just boom, way you go. <laughs> you, you can grind something. Yep. And just shut that off. All right. And well, we're up to 20. Hours. Well, we're not drawing any power now, but uh, I'm sure that's, that's the hours on that's going way up. But what? Uh, what an interesting combo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a day. Guys, girls, thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell, and I'll try to get you uh, some good, decent uh, deals and links on this stuff today that we showed. And uh, thank you for tuning in and visiting us, and uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs>